Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Fraley, founder of BreakpointTrades.com. Again, you know the drill. We've been here since 2003 providing advanced technical analysis, actionable trade ideas, market analysis, and sophisticated trading algorithms like you see here with our 21 SPY and ES mean reversion systems and our newer KISS trend following systems, which I have a huge update coming soon. Pretty excited about it. Anyway, it's the holidays. Let's go ahead and get started. As you know, on the weekend, I just did a extensive video. You know, honestly, today nothing changed. So this is, again, it's Thanksgiving week and it's Monday, November 20th, 2023. This is our back end recorder for our standard web page recorder, which I'm going to go ahead and get that started now. Hello, everyone. This is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. This is the Monday, November 20th newsletter. As you know, I just did the extensive weekend newsletter, so hopefully you all watched my YouTube video or listened to the standard newsletter um, recorder. Anyway, absolutely nothing changed with the market, guys. You know, we're in this shortened holiday week for the U.S. Thanksgiving. Markets closed on Wednesday, or I mean on Thursday for Thanksgiving, and it's open half day on Friday. Volume should get lighter and lighter as the week goes on. Typically, the market does fairly well during Thanksgiving week. It doesn't mean every day's up. Today, the market was up nicely with the S&P 500 up around 0.75%, while the NASDAQ added about 1.2%. Again, big cap tech continues to go parabolic. All right. And uh, again, not a lot to say, guys. Here, I got comments from the weekend newsletter. Really, again, like I said, nothing changed. And as far as trade ideas, I did add a few trade ideas to, to monitor. Some nice setups. Longs coming off the bottom instead of stuff that's overbought at new highs. So I added that. We're also going to discuss some of the KISS systems. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. So first image below. Item number two, this is taken directly from the website from the STS KISS system tables, okay? I had a question today. Uh, someone asked me, how do you set alerts here to get notified? And again, it's pretty simple, guys. Go to the KISS STS section. You'll see these various tabs, right? And you have a favorites tab. So your favorites tab keeps all the things that you set as favorites, okay? So when you go to these other lists, such as the basket or the NASDAQ 100 stocks or ETFs, um, you have your tables telling you the status of the systems for those instruments. To set favorites, you simply click on the stars next to each of the symbols you want and it will it'll stay highlighted. They're, the stars are not filled in normally, and then when you click on them, they fill in and they stay. To undo a favorite, you just simply click on the star again. The, the favorites are all saved in the favorites tab, and you have to check mark this box here to start receiving email alerts. Again, the big thing I'm going to be adding to the website is the custom high performance KISS systems that blow even these away. Okay, they're going to be in a new tab. I'm also going to give free SMS. Uh, text messaging to everyone who subscribed to that premium product as well. But anyway, just on the top ETFs here, well, you can see some of the nice gains here in the KISS systems, especially some of these leveraged ETFs. I mean, look at some of these gains. BULZ up 51%, SOXL up 43%, you know, with um, eight smart trailing stops. BULZ have had nine, you know, heck, even the Qs. Systems up 11% from that trigger. You can see all nice gains here. So again, if you haven't set some favorites or used it, go to that KISS STS section. And remember, it's it's in the systems area and you can set your favorites. Okay. Let's move on. Item number three. So here's an example of some of these custom high-performance KISS systems that I'll be adding. So you know, I have multiple time frames. I have a mixture of daily time frames, half day. And the smallest time frame I'm going down to is a 78 minute for some of the systems. There's five ba uh, bars in, a, in one day on a 78 minute chart. Okay. Anyway, here's the queue, 78 minute. You could see it went long essentially almost at the lows, 1027. 
it attempted a long previously that was stopped out for a small loser. You can see it's raised its stop nicely. Here's QLD 78 minute. That's the uh, two time leverage DTF for the Qs. And you can see it went long nicely there, November 1st. Look at all those smart trailing stops it set up. The latest one, 6760. So it's been on a raise at stop three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So profits are guaranteed on that. And here's the QQQ 78 minute system stats up about 47.5% this year, which is similar. Basically, it's capture the gains of the NAS, of the triple Qs, buy and hold, but without the drawdown. Qs had an 18% drawdown this year. System only had a 3%. You can see the system would have made 7.6% last year in that bear market, while the Qs lost 33%. That's the benefit of the KISS systems. They, can, they don't lose money typically in bear markets, and a lot of times they make money. And with low drawdown, you could see only 4.9% max drawdown in 2022 versus 64% for buy and hold. Holy cow. And uh, total gains beat buy and hold by a lot as well. So again, that's an example of some of these high performance KISS systems. So I plan to add a basket of these, maybe up to 10 for, um, for the KISS STS tables. Again, that'll be a premium product that we'll charge separately for. Hopefully, no one complains about that. I mean, if the systems do anything like they show, you can make a hundredfold more than the cost of what we're going to charge. Next. Back to the general market newsletter. So item number four shows the index sector table, what transpired today. Like I said, we're in the holiday week. Once again, the market is up again, not surprising. Monday, typically an up day. I think either Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday, I think seasonality tends to be a week. Overall, the week for Thanksgiving is up. Friday is usually an up day. But um, again, volume is going to get lighter here, guys. But you can see the gains today. Nice you know, gains on the 21 sectors. Mostly small gains, though. U.S. dollar pulled back 0.31% today. That helped things. Cryptos were kind of mixed, though that Mara stock that I put in the weekend newsletter had a great day. Commodities, mostly to the upside, as you can see. Index, DBC up 1.25%. Crude oil up 2.35%. Um, copper up 2%. Natural gas up 3%. So nice gains here. Precious metals, gold and silver were down, but the stocks were slightly up, so that's a positive. Again, nothing's really changed technically there. Whatever I said on the weekend remains the same, and I'll discuss that at below when we get to there. Uh, the 10-year was slightly down today, and the 20-year bonds were up. Next, item number five shows the economic news calendar. Remember, obviously not a lot on the docket this week, guys. We do have the FOMC minutes, though, on Wednesday. All right. Let's move on. Let's go ahead and move on to these index charts. So image number six, this is the monthly chart with the five major indexes. Again, like I showed on the weekend, you know, we had that typical week seasonality in August, September, and October. And so far, seasonality playing out for a nice rally in November. Nice, you know, Santa Claus rally type thing. Typically, guys, if the market... Usually the market has some weakness the first one to two weeks in December. So following Thanksgiving, that would, wouldn't shock me if we finally get a pullback in that time frame. Chapter 7, here's the daily view of the major five major index. Again, pretty much just a V move from the bottom three weeks ago when we were extremely oversold. And uh, we've only had, you know, in the S&P, we've only had one down day. Think about it. So... It's been the epitome of strength. We had a breath thrust signal that first week, and uh, price just continues strongly higher. Next. Chapter 8, here's the daily view of the S&P. Again, we had a little supply zone here. Price pause there for a little bit, but pushing again. We have an open gap here from basically the beginning of August. This line here shows that gap. We almost... Filled it today, got pretty damn close. Wouldn't be surprised to fill that gap. On a, on a pullback, if we get one next week, I'd be targeting filling this open gap here. And 
maybe even testing um, getting into this area in the 43.75. Notice the 20-day and 50-day moving averages are curling up now, so that's a positive. So the question is, do we get a pullback next week into this area, or do we break out first and then pull back? That's the question. But otherwise, this leading diagonal is played out the five ways, you know, and then we broke the channel. So also the KISS systems went nicely long back here, pretty much just a couple days off the lows on the S&P and Q. So the KISS systems have nailed it and the custom systems have really nailed it. Um, those aren't live yet though. Chapter nine, here's the equal weighted S&P, like we, Steve and I have been discussing. It's been a narrow rally overall that we're starting to see a little more participation, but you know, you have eight to 10 stocks that are 50% of the NASDAQ, which is just insane. Um, a lot of the, you know, stocks that aren't big cap tech. So when you equal weight things, you can see how much weaker the, the equal weighted S&P is versus the S&P index that has you know, those big cap tech stocks with the big weighting, such as Apple and Microsoft. So we're now it's over the 200 day moving average. There's a little supply zone here. Inverse head and shoulder pattern obviously playing out. Jabber 10, here's the KISS system for the S&P. Now this is one of the custom KISS systems with a high performance daily. And you can see it went long, basically a couple bars off the lows. So far, it's been able to raise its stop four times. Current stop is 43.68. So nice trade. You can see the previous one was a loser, which is fine. That's the nice thing about the KISS systems. They do have losers, but you have a nice stop for all your trades. So you're never going to lose that much. Uh, typically, you know, just small little losers there whenever you have a whipsaw. Next. Chapter 11, here's the four time frames. Again, nothing to say here, guys. Like I said, we had that DeMarc 9, very oversold conditions, moving average ribbon very wide back in late October. Support cycle, hell of a rally since. We blew through these resistance cycles, which was a breakout. And again, all I can say, you know, we have another A here. The last one didn't produce a, any pullback. We got one now, though. That's lighter volume. That's a move up on light volume. So that's what that signals. The ATR is now what the watch is supporting all these time frames. Chapter 12, here's the half day chart. Again, we took out that supply zone. Again, we have this open gap back here. You can see you got pretty damn close to it. That's a magnet. Next, Chapter 13, here's a 60 minute view. Again, up, up and away. I will say guys, this next push, remember we had a negative MACD divergence back here can see, but it only produced a tiny pullback, more of a sideways move. And then we're getting another move up. This second move has a second MACD divergence. A lot of times these second divergences um, play out. So that's something to monitor here. Chapter 14, here's a 60 minute view, just showing all these open gaps lately. Again, we have some MACD divergence now on this last push. Chapter 15, there's a 15 minute chart. I thought I annotated this, apologize. But let's just go ahead and move on. Chapter 16, here's the triple Q's weekly. I meant to remove this. I discussed this already on the weekend, but you know, this count I made, you know, a couple months ago, appears to be playing out. This nested one, two, one, two, three, four. We're up in a five now of three, crazy. Chapter 17, here's the triple Q's daily. Again, up, up, and away. It was interesting how the triple Q's got close to the 200-day moving average the last time. Didn't quite tag it. Um, rallied up, took out the downtrend line, had a bullish break in symmetry. New gap last week, new all-time highs. What can you say? Next, Chapter 18, here's the half-day chart. Um, again, up, up, and away. Any divergence, none on the RSI 14, none on the MACD. I mean, Chapter 19, here's the KISS system, high performance version. Again, nice entry a few weeks back. You can see the four tra smart trailing stops now, so trades are nicely protected. Chapter 20, here's the four time frames. Again, very similar to the S&P, guys, really the same. Uh, we had a DeMarc 13 on 
Friday on the Qs and a lot of the big cap tech stocks, but we pushed it again today. ATR is your support in all these time frames. Chapter 21, the Russell monthly chart again. This big support, which held last year and this year, we rallied off of it. Chapter 22, here's the daily. Again, this inverse head and shoulder pattern been playing out nicely now. Make sure to move, move your stops up. Chapter 23, there's the 60-minute view. Next, look at a couple of these indicators. Chapter 24, here's the VIX. So the VIX melting down continues. Um, we still have a Mac, an RSI 5 divergence. I need to adjust this trend line here, but you can still see there is still technically divergence there. Again, the lower Bollinger Bands are pointing very strongly down with a strong downslope. To me, the VIX isn't really able to test those lower Bollinger Bands let it bounce first. Chapter 25, here's that two-hour view of the VIX I discussed on the weekend. So this wedge is still fleshing out. It still looks fine to me. So that's why, this is why I do think we are due for a pullback at least one day this week and probably next week into the season, weaker seasonality. You can see the nice MACD divergence here in the wedge. Next, looking at some of these other custom indicators that I've uh, given you guys, here's the NYSI 9 EMA crossover system. You can also use a confirming candle for longs and shorts. It's been a very good system, as you can see. Really nice swing trades, longs and shorts this year. Nice sell signal back in early August. You know, and um, we were able to filter out that false little cross there in October. And this last signal has obviously been a very good one. Remember, a month ago, I said the next buy signal would likely be a really good one. So again, you can see it confirmed here, but nice, nice move. Chapter 27, here's the BPSPX system. So you get your general buy and sell signals when you cross these moving averages, and that obviously has been playing out. Chapter 28, here's another one, NASDAQ, McClellan, summation index with the two and five EMAs. You can see the nice crossovers. And here I'm showing some confirmation candles short. This filter out a long right here. This gave you a nice um, long here. Again, guys, if you're just watching us on YouTube, you're seeing a static image. But if you subscribe to us in our newsletters, we provide the live chart URL you know, so that you can pull up the chart on your end, save it, save it in your browser or stock charts if you have a membership, and you can check the status any day. So if you some of these systems, you want to see what they look like one week from now, a month from now, you can do that. But you need to become a subscriber to Breakpoint Trades to do that so that you can get our live URLs. A couple other things to mention, chart 29, here's the McClellan Oscillator. Remember at the at the lows in late October, we had that strong positive divergence with price. That has obviously played out. What I'm showing here is price is now lagging. If you look here, so far we got a lower high in place, obviously a higher high in the S&P. And again, this divergence could be blown out, but for now there is a divergence and you can see in the past these, you know, you had negative divergences back here and here, and those led to pullbacks. So we do have a divergence to monitor. And Charbert 30, here's a couple of these other ones. Um, this is the NAMO and the NIMO. Remember, we follow both of these. Again, you add divergences at the lows. You do have a divergence right now on this move to monitor as well. Charbert 31, here's the NASDAQ. 52 week highs minus new lows. Overall, still lagging, obviously. Again, it's been, you know, that's the problem. It's been a fairly narrow rally. NASDAQ's basically back to its highs. This is the NASDAQ index composite, not the Qs. But you can see how much lower the new highs are when they versus when, what they were in July. So definitely divergence there. All right, moving on to bonds, Jarber 32, high yield corporate, really nothing new to say. Still holding this support, previous resistance. Jarber 33, here's that two hour review. Again, Steve and I have been pointing out, we can count five ways up. So eventually this is going to have a, at least an ABC type pullback. 
Chapter 34, here's the 10-year Treasury yield continues to melt down. But remember, there is a support here to monitor where we could find some support. We also have a little RSI divergence. So one option, guys, and I'm going to pull my, um, my drawing software up here. There we go. So one option would be getting a little bounce in the rates say next week, you know, the first week or week and a half of December, we get our typical pullback. A bounce in rates would cause a would likely cause a pullback in the indexes. And then you they form a lower high than sell off again and we get that Santa Claus rally. So that's an option I am open for. Next. Trevor 35, here is the 20 year bonds again. Strong up candle, up 8.76% this month. Remember, I drew this months ago, this five-wave downtrend into the demand zone. And it's possible we have a confirmed fifth-wave low there. If so, I would expect at least maybe an ABC rally over the next year or some sort of coil. Re keep in mind, long-term, TLT is in a secular bear market now, but things don't go straight down. We've had five waves down, so we're due for some sort of type of rally in the bonds, which will cause the rates to pull back more and help the market. All right, moving on to a few sectors here. Not oh, Before we get to that, here's the daily view of TLT again. Remember, it had the parabolic move down, which was unsustainable. Nice rally so far the last few weeks. All right, following up on a few of the sectors. Again, I covered most of the sectors on the weekend, so we're not going to look at all those. We'll just look at a few. Here's transports. Continues to follow through from that toy... Uh, tight coil break. Chapter 38, Jets, the airline's ETF, continues to move up nicely, especially if you bought it from that 15 trigger inside that tight channel. It's been a nice move up, steady eddy. Chapter 39, semiconductors, again, another very strong sector. Chapter 40, banks, this is the weekly chart, just showing how you had a double bottom support into the demand zone. Chapter 41, here's the daily. So we're up near the 200-day moving average now. That's an area to monitor. Chapter 42, financials, nice rally as well. Chapter 43, XLE Energy. Again, it's recovered its 200-day moving average, still kind of chopping around. This could be a lower risk long in here, maybe with a stop at that 82 area. Right now, my I think my Custom KISS uh, high performance system is still flat on this. I've been waiting for it to go back long. Chapter 44, biotech. Remember, I set this as a long idea a couple weeks ago. I, and in last week, I saw a trigger off these dojis with a tight stop there at 64.99. Very nice move. Hope some of you guys took it. And finally, Chapter 845, here's the leverage DTF, LABU was a very nice percentage move. Still looks, pattern still looks really good here. Biotech was absolutely destroyed this year. So, you know, it may have a lot of catch up to do. Oh, finally, Chapter 46, Emerging Markets. Again, this area remains strong. By the way, the KISS system, high performance system is long. All right, moving on to commodities. Chapter 47, DBC, that's the index up one and a quarter percent today. Again, no changes in the bigger picture. Chapter 48, crude oil, nice rally so far from this um, potential wave five, wave C here. I do think crude oil was a low risk long in here with a stop right there. Chapter 49, natural gas up 3% today. Again, longer term, it's still in this channel, uptrend channel that's been, that started in April. Chapter 50, copper, very nice day, up 2%. It's a big move for copper. Testing this resistance trend line and 200-day moving average. Again, just beautiful move off that long-term support. Was an excellent long there with a stop. Chapter 51, DBA, here I tighten the pattern up. Again, still, you know, just been in a choppy uptrend. Chapter 52, uranium continues to be strong, almost basically taking out these previous highs on a closing basis. Remember, this is in a secular bull market. And chapter 53, there's the daily, just making new highs. Next, chapter 54, Bitcoin 
up slightly today, no changes overall. Chapter 55, Mara. This is one we showed last week. I talked about on the weekend. Starting to trigger here, taking out this coil trend line. Good volume patterns. I like this one. Chapter 56, US dollar continues to melt down, slightly below its 200 day moving average now. Moving to precious metals, Chapter 57, gold. Again, nothing's changed on gold. Like I said, one view would have this is a wave A, B, and we're going to come down again in a C, and then that'll be a good bottom. It's also possible we could just rally right from here, but it needs to go now, and you want to see the stocks lead here. Okay, You can see overall the stocks have underperformed since May. So we either, like I said on gold, we either do this and then rally up, or we do this. Not really sure. Um, we'll see which one overall plays out. Next, chapter 58, there's the weekly view. Again, I think eventually gold will take out this triple top resistance and go to new all-time highs. No, keep an eye on that ratio too. Chapter 59, silver, this is the weekly chart. Probably the best way to look at it, this big coil. And this is the monthly chart of silver. I really like this big coil setting up here as well. A lot of energy has been building up over the last, you know, essentially one, two, three, almost four years now. So when this breaks, there's going to be a big move on silver. Moving to the stocks, driver 61 GDX was down initially today, recovered overall, um, still potential inverse head and shoulder pattern here. You know, if you wanted to wear wide stop, no reason to give a stop any wider than that 27 area, high or low. Okay, so we had a couple hiccups here, so I'm going to finish the recording. Here, so here's GDXJ, that's the Gold Miners Junior ETF. Again, similar look, honestly, to GDX. And the same thing applies here. This pullback I'm viewing as a higher low, wave B or 2. We're going to eventually go up in a wave 3 of C. Looking at some of the individual names, here's Charber 64, WPM. It's been on the list. It's a silver stock. Still holding up fine here. Charber 65, AEM. Another gold stock that's been on the list. Again, potential inverse head and shoulder pattern. If you're long, put a swing stop at that last higher low. No reason to give it any more room than that. Chapter 66, HMY. Quite honestly, it's been the star in the precious metals. I mean, it's at new highs versus all the other gold stocks that are buried, oversold, or way, way off their highs. All right, following up with some trade ideas, guys. So... Arm, this was one we put out on the weekend. Very nice pop through this resistance. Really nice pop. Hope some caught it. Jabber 68, TCN. It's also been on the list. Triggered last week. Continues working nicely higher. Next target would be the 200-day moving average. Jabber 69, Massey. Also one that's been on the list for a couple weeks out of this rectangle pattern. It's been slow and steady, which is fine with me. I have locked in half gains. And I got to stop on the rest of the position. Target objectively measures up to around 100. Driver 70 LPG has moved up very nicely from this coil. Let's see what else we got here. Um, we're not going to look at all these ideas. So, uh, Charber 73 WKSP, one from last week, starting to move up nicely. Good volume patterns. Other ones, and let's go to some new setups here. BLDR was from last week, continues to move higher. Here's some new setups, guys. Uh, Sear, low priced off the bottom, good volume pattern. So I'm looking for some follow through momentum on these things. I tried to find some things off the bottom instead of overbought at new highs. So here's CKPT. Potential inverse head and shoulder pattern look. Again, you got a big volume spike today. Charber 80 Eero. I really like this. Looks like a little copper stock, and copper looks pretty good right now. You got a nice base here. Clean resistance at 1240. Good volume coming into it. Charber 81 LGMK. Um, big volume bar today. That's what stood out to me. So over today's highs, maybe you get some momentum. 
and Jarber 82 TV, another one, big volume bar today. Again, over today's highs, maybe you get a Momo play. All right, guys, that'll do it. Thank you for all your support, and take care.